Hello, this is Stampy Longnose, and welcome to Stampy's lovely podcast, what is officially the worst named podcast on iTunes. Uh, this is the podcast for the 6th of January 2013, and I am joined by a special guest in this podcast, Afro Dan. What is up, guys? And, uh, okay, let, let's get this out in the open straight away, what has just happened. Uh, we've done this podcast before, and it went really, <laughs> really well. It went excellently, actually. Um, it was informative, it was hilarious, we had lots of jokes, and we covered loads of interesting topics. But, there was a problem, wasn't there, Dan? What was the problem? Uh, well, you just kind of fucked it up at the end, I think. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, what the situation was, is we went for about half an hour... Half an hour of seamless, insightful conversation when Dan suddenly goes, uh, Stampy, uh, yeah? Uh, this might annoy you, but my program only recorded the first five minutes. And yeah, I restrained myself from jabbing a pen through my eyeball and killing myself because I wasted half an hour of my life doing this. And it went so well. And... We've bit the bullet and we've said, right, press record again. We're doing this again and it's going to be better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if, it so. turn, if it turns out good, I'll be happy with that. It doesn't <laughs> yeah. need to be better as long as it's good. <laughs> if this is listen to a ball, then right, fine, I'm, I'm going home. <laughs> well, I'm going to bed, actually. <laughs> Well, yeah. We... Anyway, so I'm I'm kind of assuming like you know who Dan is now just because I've been talking to him for the last half an hour. But <laughs> um, Afro Dan, if you don't know, has been in one of my Minecraft videos, uh, one of my ones very early on, and he's got his own YouTube channel as well. And more importantly, he's my good friend who I've known for about five years now uh, over Xbox Live. Yeah, that is unfortunately true. I'm just I'm fine. I'm just glad that you're referring to me as your good friend and not that. Swear wordy swear word who swear worded up the recording we just did. Well, is that just because that's what I called you before we started recording? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying yeah. to make myself look forgiving in front of everyone else. Oh, I'm still pissed with you. <laughs> <laughs> you see, that's why I did it. You said, like, oh, make me look good. So I was like, okay, we'll show your um, forgivingness. Well, by... well, actually, what would be quite funny, I'm not sure if how long I was still recording. I'm not sure if I was still recording me as you told me that we lost all of that. Because if I was, I'm going to listen to that back and I'm going to, I'll probably try and edit into this podcast somewhere because that would be kind of funny to hear my like, Stampy, yeah, this might annoy you. (laughs) What? What is it? I wasn't recording. What? (laughs) (laughs) You weren't what? This past half hour. Because it went really well, didn't it? I mean, there's no point going on about it because no one's ever going to hear it ever. And I don't know, they might think we're lying for all we know, but it it went quite well (laughs) for us. Well, well, you see, like, I I was doing pretty good, but it's, you know, they they say in the business, like, don't work with uh, children and animals. And uh, I'm going to add you to that list because, God... (laughs) You're I was just, just going to say, which am I? <laughs> <laughs> well, that got offensive quickly. Um, <laughs> yeah. I just feel like this whole this whole podcast now, we're just going to be secretly bitter with each other, but just trying to, <laughs> trying to act friendly, aren't we? <laughs> what do you mean? I'm always secretly bitter with you and have to act friendly. Why don't you talk about something, Dan? Let's try not to make it rubbish this time, shall we? <laughs> Why don't we talk about something to do with Minecraft? Are you recording? Are you sure? Are you sure? <laughs> I've, I've already checked about three times to make sure that I'm still recording. And I'm going to keep checking just to make sure. Okay, well, I won't get on about it. Okay, let, let's, let's just say I forgive you now, okay? It was an amateur error. This is the second podcast I've ever done. I'm no veteran. Yeah, and this is the first podcast you've been in. Mistakes happen. We've got to roll with the punches. And for all we know, this might be a big blessing in disguise. And this will be the best audio podcast to ever be shared online. Who knows? Yeah, I'm sure that's what's going to happen. <laughs> Positive attitudes turned. <laughs> Smile for the cameras. <laughs> oh, well, you see, I, I've not had as much experience as you've had being a prime time radio presenter. So. Oh, bring, bringing that one back out. <laughs> <laughs> Do I have to explain yep. this one? <laughs> okay, well, there's a long story. When I was in university, um, I did a student radio show to all of about 20 people, including my parents. <laughs> and um, I, I I changed the like the hours I was doing my show 
into the prime time hours, no. which which basically which is what they called it. You know, it was like lunchtime or something, and they called it prime time. <laughs> and I just mentioned to them that you should listen to my radio show because now we're in the prime time slot, which I didn't name <laughs> the prime time slot. We can now give away like prizes. And so I said, you should listen to it. But they just saw it as I had a big ego boost saying, hey, I'm a primetime radio presenter now, which wasn't how it was. I I remember it distinctly differently, where you were going on about how amazing you were and how out of everybody that could have been promoted, it was you who got promoted to prime time. Well, the thing is, I was <laughs> saying that despite the fact I was a primetime radio <laughs> presenter, not because. Like, at first I just thought I was just underrated, you know, under the radar, but now I felt like I got my dues when I was upgraded to primetime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. Always humbling and hum- humility fool or whatever the word is that I'm looking for. for that. N- none of them ones. <laughs> You've got oh. great humidity. <laughs> <laughs> he's, a, he's a very sweaty man. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent humidity on that man. Good, good job. <laughs> anyway, I suppose I've uh, introduced who you are a little bit better and say uh, what you're about. Um, as I said, I met uh, Dan through Xbox. I've never met up with him in real life. I live in the uh, very south of England. He lives in Scotland. And uh, if you don't know the United Kingdom, that's like the opposite end of where I am. And um, yeah, we met through Xbox about five years ago. And since then, um, we've played a hell of a lot of Xbox and become pretty like pretty close friends for people that have never been within a mile of each other and like we've sent each other christmas presents and like we chat to each other all the time and we've spoke to people in their families and we call each other when we're drunk at parties <laughs> and so we've come good mates through the internet accidentally and unfortunately <laughs> <laughs> oh that's my lane <laughs> yeah so i mean is, is that is that weird to be friends through just internet um, well, I don't think so. Internet friends are better than real life friends. <laughs> is that because can... is that because you don't have any real life friends, Dan? <laughs> well, well, all the real life friends I have don't consider me their real life friends, so it's a bit <laughs> awkward. Are these people that you stand next to at bus stops and then you, <laughs> you, you make presents for them and just give them to you? <laughs> yeah, that, that doesn't go down well, but, you know, it's it's the thought that counts and, you know, I, I think they're my friend and that's that's it, that's it. <laughs> okay, well, I'm not going to lie about this. One of the topics we spoke about uh, the first time we tried to record this podcast um, was the fact that I found it a bit weird, the whole idea of online dating and stuff, and Dan was quite open to it. In fact, uh, he has yeah. done some... Uh, 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 he's been on some dating sorry. websites, and uh, one of his first responses when the uh, first podcast failed uh, was that, oh, yay, that means that the whole talk about the online dating has now uh, disappeared into the ether. And so I think it's uh, quite important to bring it back up uh, in this podcast just to make sure he doesn't get off too easy. This is your punishment. This is your punishment. We're going to talk again about the thing you didn't want to talk about. So, yeah, you've, d- you've done online dating, haven't you? Um, nope. Don't know what you're talking about. I don't even know what online dating is. Um, <laughs> that's all I'd like to talk about that topic. Let's move on. So, oh, Joe... <laughs> Hopefully that was still within the first five minutes of the podcast and that hasn't been lost forever, <laughs> our conversation about that. Yeah, oh I mean, my God. But in all seriousness, for a minute, as I said, like it's something that I would never consider doing, but it, it's obviously something that you would because you did. And if you spoke to, I say, most people over the age of, I don't know, maybe 30 or 40, the idea of meeting people over the internet is still very alien and, I don't know, probably just a bit, just a bit weird and unnatural to them. Like, what would you say to someone who says that? Um, what, that it's unnatural to look for people over the internet? Well, not, look for... well, not unnatural, just like... I don't know, it, it seemed like when you sort of say, oh, where did you meet? If you say, like, oh, I met them in a club, no one's going to, like, look into it or think about it. Even you say, like, we met over the internet or we met on Xbox or something. Oh, we met on Valhalla and Halo 3. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it sounds weirder. <laughs> Uh, I I I can understand that. Um, what did I say that? Um, there's nothing wrong with this. It's just the same as meeting, like, um, someone through a friend. Only that friend is a computer, and it's made to match people up. So technically, it's yeah, even that, better that's not than as your. Weird. <laughs> it's even better than your friend who's like drunk. Like, hey, I think you should 
meet this person because they're nice. And it's 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 a, it's a machine made to match people together. Even though, not that I did it, but if I ever did, <laughs> it probably wouldn't find me one. <laughs> I totally covered my bases there. Oh I? yeah, oh yeah, yeah. No, no, no one's gonna look into that any more than they should. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I think the main negative connotation with it is the idea of like it makes you seem desperate. I guess, like the the idea of, I don't know, I don't know. I mean, this might just be the way I think about it. Like it, I don't know. I think some people might think about it as if it's like the last resort. Like you haven't met someone, like resort to to finding someone online. But when you think about it, it makes perfect sense. Why should we? restrict ourselves to the people we run a like run into in real life why not have a computer using code where it like you could type in your personality and what you like and who you're looking for and then it, it matches people together that should work like i mean that it, it makes sense doesn't it like why why doesn't everyone do that all the time <laughs> i know um it i don't know it, well for me anyway when i didn't use that it was just to see what happened, like you know, um, if I if I ever did it, I would have been single at the time. <laughs> uh, okay, so yes, I did. I did um, try a dating website. And, you don't uh, need to explain that. P- p- people have gathered. <laughs> <laughs> well, this may come as a shock to you. <laughs> um, uh, so I, I I tried it out just to see what it was like. I had a friend who was. Um, He's when I was in college, I had a friend who was very successful with the women, even though he was probably one of the most strangest people I've ever met. I mean, like he used to wipe down every single glass that he, if we went like if we went to a pub on our break, um, he used to like go get a drink and then wipe down the glass so that because he used to say like he doesn't want like the government getting his like fingerprints and his DNA and stuff so where, he was where like where were you drinking like downing <laughs> street or like... <laughs> uh oh so he was he was a strange uh, he was my friend but he was you know you've got those friends and you kind of think w- why why if you you're a strange person yeah i i got one of them <laughs> I, I know just who to think of, Dan. Anyway, carry on. <laughs> yeah, so so he he did very well with the ladies, um, and uh, he he was telling me about this website that he used, which has no name and shall never ever be spoken of, and uh, he says that he like he met women for the physical thing, you know the the s word, and uh, sausages. Yeah, swinging, I mean, swinging. Like, he he in liked the park. a woman who could uh, fry sausages, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he, he, he was saying like it's a really easy way to eat, to meet, to eat women, to meet women. And uh, you know, being innocent Dan that I am, <laughs> I was just like, oh, maybe I can meet someone to fall in love with. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that didn't happen. Um, Women. I so I so need to track down your page. I oh. so I I need a good laugh. Right, let me let me just Google. No, do your not name Google in. it, please. Oh, oh come on, of God! I beg you not to Google it. Okay, well I um, beg you not to. I've Google just it. okay. His uh, full name is Daniel Wordy, and no, I've, ju- I've just not. Googled it's it in. Stephen Thompson. Okay, well we got your your Facebook page. Oh, your not. your MySpace page has come up. Oh God, no! That is a blast and from and, the and called Afro Dan. Oh, here we go. Uh, Desperate Searching <laughs> Daniel Word. <laughs> uh, what was what's the website? PP dot com. Is that uh, it? PP dot com. <laughs> that, that's shows. one. Uh, so I'm looking up P E E E P. Oh, people. It's an L. People dot com. Is that the one? Uh, no, because it doesn't exist. Don't ever. Don't ever look. Don't ever look. Okay, that... well, th- there's my project for the for the rest of the night. Oh, my God. trees, my trees. Are you on my trees? No. I'm just waiting for you to start panicking when I find you. I'm gonna find like I enjoy long walks along the beach in the midnight <laughs> moon. Like, <laughs> well, what I really want to just see is what picture. Like, I think that's a really good way to judge a person by their profile picture on Facebook because you can. It's it's the way to tell how they want to be presented. Like if they got 
like a black and white picture of them like looking really moody into the distance as if they're really emotional you can kind of tell what they're like and if you've got someone who's going like like sticking their tongue out and going like way like holding up a beer you can tell like how they want to be seen by the world and the people that just sort of don't really care and then the people that have like a picture of like their cat or something and you just know that they're really ugly and they didn't want their profile <laughs> picture on that i mean that's a, it's a good way because it's it's whatever their profile picture is people seeing themselves in their best like according to them their best light <laughs> So, I don't know, it's interesting. And I think with dating websites, that's even more so, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it's a, it's actually quite interesting when you, when you are on these websites and you see pretty women and it's like any time you ever see a picture and it's just the face, the body is probably not something you want to see. Probably not human. <laughs> <laughs> every time, every time you like click someone, you're like, oh, she's pretty. Or he, if you'd like that, which is not my style. Uh, just clearing this up before I get harassed here. Oh, my God. I couldn't dig a bigger hole if I tried here. <laughs> um, I don't even remember what I was saying. I'm, I'm going gonna, just... I'm, I'm gonna to stop you there, Dan, because <laughs> my you're, you're approaching bedrock. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you couldn't dig any further than that. <laughs> you were oh. saying about the idea of if it's just a close-up of their face, then their body... Uh, I don't know, might resemble a, a walrus, for, for example, <laughs> maybe. But then again, you could go the opposite. And if you've got a bad face, have like a really distant, like silhouetted shot where you look really good with a good pose, but you get closer and it's like, whoa, what's going on there? Is... <laughs> oh, well, generally, if the picture is of the breasts, then that's the case. <laughs> they're, they've got, they're facially challenged. Then you've got to quickly check the gender and make sure, <laughs> make sure you're not getting fooled. <laughs> Oh, There's some God. big guys out there, and on a close-up, it could trick the best of us. You just got to look out for hairs. That's the giveaway. <laughs> <laughs> look out for protruding testicles in areas that you don't want them to be in. What next to their nipples? <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> you got to make sure. You know, you don't want chesticles sticking out there. I mean, I don't know if on this podcast is an appropriate time to talk about this, Dan. But if you're body layout is as such i think a visit to the doctors in order i think i think th- i think things are in the wrong place dan for you well it's never bothered amy so that's all right <laughs> it was bothering me just thinking about it i'm not going to be able to sleep tonight <laughs> so what you're trying to say is you're picturing me naked um yeah but it, it's not like i've ever pictured someone naked before <laughs> it's a new experience for me <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm just wondering how you could ever sleep on your front. That's all it is. <laughs> it's quite painful. Let's just put it that way. I just want to take a quick moment here just to make sure you are recording this, by the way, just to, yeah, j- j- just I, to make. And it, this isn't even me being sarcastic or doing a dig at you. I just want to actually make sure because I don't want to waste an entire evening speaking into a mic when no one's going to hear it. I mean, my, my voice is valuable. Every word <laughs> and people need to hear. I need an audience. I'm a primetime radio presenter, for God's sake, Dan. Well, every every opportunity to plug that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to, uh, to plug it? I don't even do it anymore. <laughs> I did it years ago at uni. Although oh, the podcasts God. are still available online at www. I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> oh, my face hurts from just laughing and being terribly embarrassed <laughs> a combination of the two like a like a guilty laugh an embarrassed laugh <laughs> well i can confirm that it does very much appear to be recording although i the start may be a bit quieter than this is <sighs> but you that, i'm sure you i'm sure with your prime time radio presenter abilities you'll be able to adjust the volume accordingly yeah but it's just just work though isn't it like if you did it fine, I could just slap it together and put it online. Now I'm gonna to have to bloody listen to it back. <laughs> oh, that is that is unfortunate for you. I I, ne- I never listened to the first podcast back, and I, I was in two minds about uploading it because I don't know, like it just it just felt so unprofessional. And the idea of the podcast was supposed to be a casual chat anyway. Like it was never supposed to be professional. But when I finished it, I just thought like. Can I put that on the internet? Can I give that to the world to make what it wants of it? Uh, but I don't know. I mean, you enjoyed it, you said. Did I? <laughs> well, you, uh, you listened yeah. to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was very good. I I really uh, found it interesting. I, I, I like 
learning about the people that I I like listen to or watch on YouTube and stuff, and I like I I'm interested in knowing about um their lives and stuff. I believe. Like, not like a creepy stalker, let's just get that clear. Sounds a little <laughs> bit weird. I like knowing what they like and where they live and where they like to hide. <laughs> <laughs> uh, coincidentally, where do you like to hide, Joe? <laughs> I'm not telling you, it's my hiding place. <laughs> Under the yeah, covers. Well, I, I don't know, I, I like sort of involving myself, you know, it, well, for me anyway, when I when I listen to, uh, like, you or watch YouTube videos and stuff, um... You know, the content is one thing, but the person is another. And I think if you're listening to, like, if you're watching or listening to something and you don't like the person, it makes it a lot difficult, a lot more difficult to actually get into it. So well, I. That's right, go on. <laughs> I genuinely. I, oh! <laughs> I generally only listen to um, people that I'm interested like, that I feel that I like and uh you know when you've when you know some or when you have when you like somebody like that, you know, it's it's interesting to like find out what their um what is the word? What their what they're really like, what their personality? Yeah, what their personality's like and all that stuff. I think it depends on the channel and the person. There's people that I listen to because I like them and I'd listen to them playing like any game or whatever I just like them as a per they're entertaining as a person or likeable or I don't know just well spoken and to the point and then there's other people that you watch because you're trying to learn what they're teaching you maybe they're a tutorial person or they give news and they just do it well but you might not like them but they tell you what you want to know quickly and when I started my first channel Stampy Long Nose like I wanted to be about gaming. I never wanted the channel to be about me. I never once said my real name, where I live. I never spoke about what I'm doing in my personal life ever. I wanted it to be gaming videos, talking about gaming, because no one's going to care about me. And I think in most cases that's true. People, I mean, you don't know me. You're not going to want to hear about me. But when I did my second channel, which is the Let's Play channels, because I'm talking for like a longer period of time, it's more about me playing the game. And so I don't know. I guess I'm I'm opening up a bit more now on YouTube with my uh, Stampy Longhead channel. <laughs> yeah, well, it would be hard to fill up a whole Let's Play channel without at least mentioning one thing about yourself. It'd be difficult to go that length of time without resorting to, yeah. So uh, I had a fun day at work or something like that. <laughs> yeah, well, well, I mean, I never do that though. I never. I mean, I don't, I don't know. I don't do what I do on my Let's Plays. I never really talk about what I'm doing at work or what I'm doing outside of Minecraft because, I mean, a few people might care, but I think in the majority, like, people are watching the video because of Minecraft. Like, my second channel's starting to get relatively popular, certainly growing way quicker than my first channel. And I know it's not because I'm doing anything different. It's because minecraft is ridiculously popular right now on all platforms and so many minecraft videos are getting uploaded i'm getting just random hits for people looking at minecraft and then they just sort of stick around i know it's not just because of me and the proof of that is i'll upload a minecraft video that will get 2000 views and then the next day i'll upload a shadow of the colossus video which will get like 12. <laughs> so i know that people aren't coming back just because of me it's because of minecraft but if, I don't know, I think if you are too impersonal, then, I don't know, it just it gets a bit boring for that length of time. Yeah, <clears throat> there would be nothing else, there would be nothing to talk about. I mean, there's only so much, like, gaming news and game features and stuff like that that you would eventually just run out of things to talk about. I just half... talk about Gregory the dog. <laughs> <laughs> but there's only so many things that you could talk about Gregory the dog. <laughs> he was only ever in one video. <laughs> The mo maybe that's why everybody watches like that's why nobody watches your Shadow of the Colossus video because it's not got Gregory in it and they're just hoping for a triumphant return of Gregory. What as a ghost? A ghost Gregory? <laughs> a ghost dog? Yeah, I'd I'd say that's that's got prime time YouTube written all over it right there. 
Uh, if you don't know who Gregory is, by the way, then where the hell have you been? I mean, You've if, been if, if under <laughs> a rock the whole time. <laughs> the big YouTube phenomenon, the big meme of Gregory the dog. <laughs> <laughs> well, certainly in my channel, anyway. Um, he's basically a, my first dog in Minecraft, which was in my I think it's like my fifth or sixth video or something. My my first dog, and it was the most fun I've ever had recording a gaming video was just me making the video with Gregory and I was half trying to build something and half just having fun with my dog <laughs> and then um, unfortunately he got shot uh, by an arrow <laughs> from a skeleton in the very next video and I had a little, a little funeral for him and buried him and I'm, I'm still not 100% over it I still, I wish Gregory hadn't died yeah, at least for several more videos and I only had one dog I wish it was just Stampy Longnose and Gregory the duo. Like, I don't know, I, I, I'm genuinely a little bit hurt that Gregory was selfish enough to get himself murdered like that. <laughs> yeah, it's all his fault. You should definitely write some sort of letter of complaint to the Dogs Trust. Like, your <laughs> dogs are selfish and they kill themselves while I'm trying to record them. I find that. You really just reminded me of something that happened today. Okay, this is completely off topic, nothing to do with gaming, but uh, it made me laugh. Uh, today, when we're at work, um, the person I was working with, Carl, who um, I'm going to send him this podcast now, so he might be listening to this <laughs> just because I'm mentioning him in it. Um, there's someone that came into the uh, the pub, and he always has his dog there, and the dog always comes up to the end of the bar because it wants a treat, and he goes and sits at the end of the bar. It doesn't go past the line. It doesn't go behind the bar. It knows, and it'll just sit there looking at you with its tongue out like... <laughs> Like, can I can I have a treat? Can I have a treat? And in the end, you're like, all right, go on, have a treat. And it's like, yay! Can I have another one? And it just does that, like, the whole day. <laughs> just trying to get as many treats as it can from, like, the bar staff that feel guilty about having their dog there. But anyway, we were talking to the owner, and he was saying about that he always has the dog in the garden, and the dog's not allowed in the house, like, ever. Like, it's got a dog house, but it's never allowed in the house. And then Carl was like, oh, and the person I was working with, the other barman, was like, oh, like can't just like always have it outside like that's not fair like does it ever try and get in and then he said oh no it's on a chain he was like it's on a chain and then just like throughout the entire day like every time he walked past him he was just like a chain like i like, getting really upset and then he started writing little notes saying like i don't know like just how bad it is he drew like he drew like a little picture of the dog on the chain looking really upset and then he made a petition saying um i i named it saying like unchained uh, unchain the um oh, what was it i was like unchain know. the prosecutor or something like that it was just something stupid like that like unchained the like unworthy or something like that like to save this dog and then we went around the pub and got like everyone to sign a petition to like unchain this dog and he got straws and he made a little fake chain out of straws and like put it on like the dog and then like snapped it off like unchaining the dog <laughs> yeah and we had a whole petition that like we passed around the pub and like, actually got everyone to sign it in the pub all like what was like 15 or something of them but yeah then, then we gave it to him and then his wife came in <laughs> and then we gave it to her to take them home <laughs> and yeah sorry it just really reminded me of it what you were saying earlier it was quite i don't know if it was a you had to be there thing but it was quite amusing today we weren't very uh, busy I, behind I the bar i guess it was a quiet day then <laughs> oh yeah we, we were run off our feet <laughs> <laughs> oh what god it, I mean, it's, it's the bad time of just after New Year's Eve, just after Christmas, and no one's got any money, and everyone's hangover, so, like, no one's drinking. <laughs> Which is bad times for you. We need more alcoholics in this country. We do, we do. <laughs> There's a, I'm going to write to the government about it. They need to make drinks cheaper again. They need to stop raising taxes. <laughs> Damn straight. Okay, well, we've spoke about enough random stuff for long enough. Um... In the last time we tried to do this podcast, I was very generous and uh, gave you a few minutes to plug uh, your own YouTube channel. And uh, I'm going to be nice, even though you wasted my time earlier and you didn't record. I'm going to be nice and let you uh, plug your podcast again. Oh, not your podcast, plug your channel again. <laughs> oh, um, I just checked and yeah. I don't believe you. Oh, I don't believe you're no you. Fun. You're no <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Well, it, it, and if it is true, then I'm deleting you as a friend from uh, Xbox. I'm deleting you from Skype and Facebook and any other form of communication, and never speaking to you again. It's been great. <laughs> <laughs> you would really do that. 
Just just as I was being nice and letting you plug your YouTube channel, you go and try and play a joke on me. Dude, you got to have the comedy, even though it probably wasn't very funny, but... People's sides are splitting right now. People rolling on the floor in laughter. What an amazing prank you played on Stampy Longnose. <laughs> oh, God. Well, <laughs> to change the subject off me being pulled <laughs> off... <laughs> I'm behave, sorry, Dan. It behave. Won't again. Wordy. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> my channel is currently um the thing I'm uploading mostly is let's plays on Minecraft, which is original. Currently... <laughs> what? What? Original. <laughs> let's oh, plays on well... Minecraft. Go. Cool. Where'd you get that idea? Well, there was a, some. I have a guy in my sub box, and he's English, and he's like, "All right, I'm Stampy Longnose." So I just thought I'd have to. Good day, him. Stampy Longnose here. What's a game of cricket then? <laughs> <laughs> stereotypes are not funny, and I I am cross at you for making stereotypes. You're allowed to do them if you're within the stereotype. Is that a rule? Is that okay? It is now. <laughs> Stampy said so and he's a prime time radio presenter <laughs> and that what he says goes well anyway <laughs> it's never been so, you must have never had it so difficult to try and get somebody to plug their own <laughs> channel <laughs> well you've actually just run out of time I gave you two minutes to plug your channel and your two minutes are up now so <laughs> let's talk about my channel now <laughs> <laughs> oh, what was even the point <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry, um, carry on yeah, it. Uh, I do mostly um, Minecraft um, Let's Plays, and uh, one of the things that I've decided to do is, well, for me anyway, Minecraft is more more about um, the first couple of Minecraft days is about proper survival, like need to build a shack and then um, get up materials and stuff, and then the next couple of days after that is just about just pure mining collecting materials and now I'm glad I've got past all that part and I'm on to the part where I actually get to build things and uh, I'm a big fan of redstoning uh, I'm not brilliant at it but I do um, pretty much everything that if you can do it I try at least to make a version of it myself like uh, I just made a chicken farm was my last two videos were um, me making a chicken, f like an automated chicken farm, so that you don't have to deal with the annoyingness of um, making chickens breed and running around collecting eggs. You can AFK, and it's it's it was really fun to build. And I think the the video, at least from at least one comment anyway, says that the uh, um, the video was like really helpful, and he was asking for a tutorial and stuff, which uh, you which did. Is which is the other part of my uh, Minecraft channel, which will be tutorials on um, either the stuff that I build in my world. I'll be doing tutorials about, like, if I build a uh, mob spawner, which is the next thing I've got coming, and I'll be doing a tutorial, like, a complete separate tutorial where I actually will go into my super flat world where I do all my, um, like, mock-ups and testing, and I actually build the the thing like completely separate so you can see exactly how it was built and set up and how it works which is uh, one of the things I like watching and finding out about myself when I um, watch people on YouTube and stuff I like to know if they build something and it looks awesome I like to know exactly how it works even if I'm not intending to build it myself it's just really interesting I find like well at least redstone stuff I find it really interesting so and it, it's quite a different look on Minecraft from me. I mean, that's, that's the thing I like about Minecraft. Is it can be kind of a different game to different people. Like, I, I've i learnt a bit of Redstone, most of which you have taught me. <laughs> <laughs> like, most of the complicated stuff anyway. Well, slightly complicated stuff. More than door open when you press button. Anything above <laughs> that, you've taught me. Uh, but, I mean, I like I like building things that look nice. And I like playing i like doing silly games in minecraft i like making sideshow games i mean that's why i made my golf course and stuff i mean i like i like playing minecraft when you more like like the survival side of it you see it more 
of a game. I don't know, probably close to something like DayZ, but without the, <laughs> without so many evil zombies, there's only a few zombies in Minecraft. Like you look at it kind of differently, and so many people do. Some people look at it like Lego. They look at it as a building game but they never do survival and some people look at it as i don't know like a way to do coding like with some of the like computer craft in the pc version i mean that's one of the best things about minecraft that's actually a really good point like stuff that like at least i myself never think about is like all the coding and mods that you can actually just make yourself and stuff i never really think about that but it's it's more than just uh like pick up the game, go do the objective on the screen, you completed the game, congratulations. Because there isn't any of that. It's like, it, Minecraft is completely what you make of it. Like There's a lot of games that say they're a sandbox, but I think Minecraft is one of the truly ones where it is a, it's just like an, an, an empty piece of paper and you can do what you want and just play what you want with it. I mean, like, see, if you think about the, uh, the actual goal of Minecraft... There is the Ender Dragon. That is all. So really, if you if you played it like that, it would be like you spawn in, you spend enough time to collect the materials you need to kill the Ender Dragon, and that's it. But I mean, that is that is like the, and I mean the game doesn't even end there. Like there's no like end screen game over. It's just like one of the things you can do there. It, it's depend on how you look at it you could say that there's like no goals to do but the thing about minecraft is that although there are no set goals in the game itself you, you there's so many goals that you can make for yourself that it, if you don't think of it that way it's the game's wasted on you because it's like this is like the most like open thing that you can do without just like making your own game if you know what i mean well, I mean, surviving's pretty easy, to be honest. Once you've got a house with a bed and, like, a torch, all you need to do is get food, which you can really easily do. Like, surviving is nothing. It's just about making your way of life easier, making it so you can, yeah. I don't know, gather materials easier, make it so you can get, like, items from mobs easier. It's just about making your life easier and then making where you do that look prettier make your house look nicer <laughs> rather than I mean you could just build it all out of cobblestone or all out of dirt but you don't want to just because you want it to look nicer for no real gain it just it looks, looks a bit nicer doesn't it <laughs> yeah, it's funny how uh, Minecraft grips you like that and it uh, like really brings out the OCD in people and you'd be like building a house and if there's one I don't know why I've done that myself or, like a pathway around your house or something if there's one block out of place you just have to redo it because you cannot leave it it must be redone it's quite funny how uh, OCD Minecraft makes you it's for me it's making things symmetrical if yeah. it is slightly not symmetrical like you know when you build a room and you're just building it not really thinking about it and then you got to place the one door in the middle and it doesn't quite fit in the middle. It's either got to be a little bit too far to the right or a little bit too far to the left, but a double door wouldn't fit in. I'm like, right, start again. Like, yeah. <laughs> just, let's just change all the dimensions. Like, I'm not settling with that. I can't handle that. <laughs> yeah, I, that's exactly what I'm like. I cannot have it be wrong. It's like, I, I wouldn't ever say that I was like, I had any sort of OCD issue or that because... Uh, my my room is a slob room and you know i i've never been like oh super tidy but when it comes to minecraft if there's a block out of place i will destroy the entire building and do it right then leave it out of place it just it cannot be in my head oh well i'm the opposite in my room i've got two tvs one on either side of the room and two wardrobes and two beds my whole room's exactly symmetrical <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, oh no sorry that's just a mirror oh dear <laughs> no, <God>. <laughs> <laughs> but you play on your let's plays you're doing the pc version of minecraft uh rather than the xbox version so well you you started on pc then when xbox came out you sort of joined all of us on xbox and now you've sort of moved a bit back to pc like with your let's play and that so you've played both like a reasonable amount is the pc just simply the better game is it the best minecraft um I would uh, I would say it is. I mean, the one thing I prefer about Xbox Minecraft is that Xbox has the Xbox community and it's extremely easy for me to just invite people that I already have established a connection with, like yourself or 
like you know people that I've already met and know and that and it's really easy just to invite them into a party and then invite them into a game and be playing and there's no sort of like compatibility problems apart from the NET issues that like every Xbox game or I don't even know if PC or that have that sort of problem but yeah apart from that like it's like it's easier to um network and get your friends in and play with them and that's that's about the only thing that I really think is better on the Xbox. In some ways it's good with Xbox Live as I mean I've, we've been on Xbox Live for what I think I've been on for six years or something now and I've got my established friends list and it's easy just to invite them in and yeah. I know that uh, certainly in the early days I believe it's got better now Minecraft multiplayer is a bit awkward like it's not user friendly but the thing that I really wish, like I don't care about mods or texture packs and that kind of stuff. I mean, it would be nice, but I don't care that much. I wish I could have a consistent server for like my community world where I could have more than eight people come on and they wouldn't all be bloody lagging because they all could have carry off my rubbish English connection. I wish that they could all just join whenever and I could have more than eight people and just have a constant server always online. That That would be perfect for me. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, I've been thinking pretty seriously about maybe just, I mean, I, I run my server, like, I don't play on, like, single player, I play on a, a Hamachi server, like, Hamachi being some sort of networking tool, I don't understand how it works, all I know is that it does, <laughs> and, uh, like, it, it just, like, you make your server and you use Hamachi and it, like, allows people to connect to it. And that's how I run my server. And uh, do you pay for that? Is that free? No, or? it's free. It's free. And uh, that's how I run my server. And like, <clears throat> what I use, I I like. I prefer playing games with people, even if it's just talking to them. But I pref I can't. I don't really like just sitting on my own and like staring at a screen, or at least not Minecraft. Anyway, I think it's more of like a party game, sort of, or at least. Working together to make a coming to a goal is better than um, just doing it on your own, for me anyway. <clears throat> and uh, like, I anyway, I run my server off that Hamachi thing, and it means that um, I, I don't pay for Hamachi, so I only I can only have like five players on it, and uh, it means that once those five slots are filled, I can't have anyone else in. I've been seriously considering about buying my own server or renting one, which is really cheap actually. You can get a server for is it two, and no four four pound for a month, and uh, it just make it really easy. And that's what like Xbox lacks is that sort of permanent server thing. I mean, you could like leave your Xbox on all the time, but that uses power, and the Xbox can be loud and all that stuff. I mean, cause I think, I mean, that is a, obviously a big thing, like the difference between Xbox and PC. But, I mean, a lot of people say about the differences in the game in terms of the Xboxes behind in terms of updates. And a lot of Xbox people are saying, like, oh, we're, we're catching up with PC. Like, soon we're going to be, like, either just behind them or level with PC. But, to be honest, what they actually add to the game of Minecraft, I don't think matters that much. Just the big difference is mods, isn't it? Mods is the things that make Minecraft like anything, don't they? It, it takes basically the Minecraft engine and people are making whatever they want in it. I mean, that that's the big difference. And some people don't care about that. They want vanilla Minecraft. They want to play on their widescreen TV with their controller and they don't care about the mods. And I, I guess I'm one of those people, but for other people, like they probably don't even consider just loading up a survival world on Minecraft and just playing like that. Yeah, um, I mean, mods are unbelievable, and, like, the ease of use of the mods as well, like, there's no, I believe, I've never, I've never used mods on my own server or in any other server with mods, but, I mean, any time I'm on YouTube, I always look up something to do with uh, Minecraft mods, because they're just so awesome, and, like, I mean, the things people can do with them is insane, especially... Um, when people like make their own game within a game and all that stuff, it's unreal. And uh, well, why haven't you done any of that? I mean, you're on PC Minecraft. I mean, that that that's the big thing. I mean, that and texture packs, I suppose. Like, that's the big <laughs> thing that's supposed to be making it better. Why aren't you making the most of that? Well, you see, 
um, Minecraft in itself, like the actual game itself without any mods on it, is quite a lot more expansive than the Xbox version, and it's a lot further expanded. And I, I've had uh, people get at me for saying that the Xbox is um, far b or behind the PC, but it's true. No matter what way you look at it, it is behind. And it it will catch it may catch up but it will never surpass. It well, will... apparently they're going in a different direction. Apparently, I think after the next update, uh, Mojang and 4J are going to kind of split. So instead of 4J just redoing what Mojang does, the Xbox edition is going to just come up with its own updates, and 4J are going to make their own things specifically for Xbox instead of just trying to keep up with Mojang. Which I'm looking forward to because, I don't know, I think that, I mean, the Minecraft version on Xbox and PC, they're never going to be on a par. And at the moment, Xbox is always just going to be, like, a slightly worse version of the PC. But I think that if they make themselves more different and kind of, like, still the same game, but their own features, then it's going to be a bit more of a case of which one do you prefer or... Do you want the full version or the user-friendly version? <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of... I, I, I think you mentioned that to me before, and uh, I really think that they're making a good choice by doing that, because, I mean, the ease that um, Mojang have to update the Xbox is, like, there's no comparison, you know, to update... Or Mojang have to update the PC, sorry. I mean, Mojang can update the PC... Uh, if and when they like, they can update it one day and change the update the next day and uh, take user feedback and implement like exactly what they want when they want and it's up to them but as far as I'm aware like Xbox is a lot more difficult to just like to ev to update your own game, it's a lot diff a lot more difficult. Well I mean I was following 4J on Twitter when they were doing the, uh, the 1.8.2 update on the Xbox edition and they tweeted saying, like, we've just sent the update to Microsoft for, like, cert testing. Like, it should be online soon. And it was, like, a good full week until it act the update actually came out. Like, a full week after they finished making the update for Microsoft to say, yeah, it's okay, it's not too buggy, it won't break the Xbox, we can do it. And the cost as well, they got to pay for that. Like, people got to pay for the man hours of Microsoft, like, testing this stuff to make sure it's not going to blow Microsoft because if people load up Minecraft and it like I don't know blows the like blows the processor or just doesn't work then people are all going to go to Microsoft asking for money back or compensation like with the PC Mojang doesn't have that if something doesn't work they're like okay we'll fix it like putting a new update up now I mean that that's the big difference it's not as free and open a piece of hardware as the PC like the PC could be anything the Xbox is like a self-contained box which is owned by Microsoft and that is good in some ways it's got quality control but it's not easy for developers yeah I uh, yeah I, I knew about the uh, like that it was difficult but I didn't know like that was the sort of time scale that they actually had to like wait for their updates to come out and stuff you only took ages and it was annoying for me because I was there like ready to do a uh, video like I was expecting the update to come out the next day or something and I wanted to get <laughs> like an like a video out saying about all of the new features as soon as possible uh, to try and get more views and I kept waiting and waiting and waiting and I was getting closer to the weekend I was like oh don't come out on the weekend because I'm going to be working <laughs> and then the update coming out like like Friday evening like while Joe's at work <laughs> I'm like no <laughs> yeah so I was a bit late like doing the video for it I mean it was annoying for me and I'm sure that didn't affect too many other people but I mean I think that is one of the big differences between them and I mean I, I accept that the version of like Minecraft I play probably isn't the best version but it's what I'm happy with I don't want to worry about trying to plug my laptop into my TV screen um, I like the controller I don't want to have a laptop like on my lap or like have a keyboard I like just holding a device in my hand to control it. I'm used to the controller. I can move and aim fine. I can craft easily without having to lay things out and remember stuff. Like, I'm happy with that. And to be honest, I probably don't have the time to play Minecraft enough to make the most out of all the mods and all the other stuff like that. Yeah, um, I... 
I agree with that. Like, there's so much to do on the PC that it's it probably impossible really to do it all. Uh, especially with mods, which will take time to implement into your game. But I think that 4G are definitely doing the right thing by um, not just like we're ha this is the X this is the Xbox version of Minecraft. It will follow PC in the direction it goes. I think they've definitely made the right choice in sort of making it their own so that it won't always just be Xbox like Minecraft about five updates behind. It'll be Xbox Minecraft its own sort of game and that kind of when we were talking about like Minecraft being able to be made into what you want it to be made into and being like the ability to have games within the game itself, you know, that, that works with Minecraft. They can go their own way and implement their own updates and uh, it'll still, like, as long as they do implement the right updates and stuff, it'll still come out brilliantly and you'll still be able to get plenty of enjoyment out of it. Do you think that we're sadly ne <laughs> neglecting the Pocket Edition? Uh, the the Android and iPhone edition of Minecraft. Do you think we're ignoring that a little bit too much here? <laughs> uh, I've never used and I, I have considered it because uh, I'm a big saddle and when I'm in work all <laughs> I really think about doing is just to get me through the monotony of sitting and serving people. I work in a petrol station um, selling petrol all day and uh to get through the monotony, I, I just sit and, like, right, okay, I could do this in Minecraft and sit, get wee bits of paper and draw out little plans I, I and thought stuff. you were going to say, like, get pieces of paper and fold them into blocks and start building, like, <laughs> I'm a, little, not, I'm a not mini quite chicken that, farm. But... Just <laughs> on your desk. Get, like, sugar cubes or something and start building a little hut. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in Minecraft. I'm in Minecraft. I'm not in a petrol station. <laughs> Oh god, um, it's not quite got to that stage yet, but um, I do like, I don't even remember what my original point was, I just started laughing and I forgot what I was going to We're talking say. about the, the, the pocket edition, like I, I don't know if it's on Android, I know it's on iPhone at least. I, I would imagine it was probably on Android, oh, oh yeah, I the assumed. pocket edition, so uh, um, I don't know, I... I I don't see how it would work very well. I've, on... I've played it. I've played it. I've got... There's like a free trial, like a demo of it. And it's like just creative mode. And it looks good. It looks like proper Minecraft. I mean, the iPhone can handle it. It's just the controls, which... I mean, you do get used to, but they're never going to be good. It's like the virtual joysticks are never going to be good. And they've done it the best they could on an iPhone. Or like... I mean, I'm sure it'd be better on an iPad. But on an iPhone, it's the best it could be. But it's still not good. It's still, I mean, I don't know. It's it's just the controls. That's all that gets me is the controls, and it's just it's like it's just a bit of a chore. Like, you know, when you're trying to jump and build and place blocks or build them all in a row quickly, you just can't do that without a mouse and keyboard or joysticks. Yeah, I. It just sounds like it'd be so complicated. I was thinking about like. Oh, I wonder what it would be like. And I started thinking about, like, how would you control it? And, like, I just can't even comprehend how it would work. How does it, like, how does it, how do you work the controls? Well, you move, like, how you'd expect. Like, if you put your thumb on the left side of the screen, you move around. Uh, yeah. Right side of the screen, you look around. And then to destroy a block, you just hold your finger on that block. And there's, like, a little circle comes up. And it will get, like, boom, 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 like it getting destroyed and it works fine and I mean in some ways it is better in some circumstances like you could stand looking at a wall and then you just put your finger on whatever block you want to destroy it doesn't have to be in like the middle of the screen and so as I said they've done it the best they could but I don't know it's still not good I'm going to look at how much it's sold because it's sold loads I'm not sure if it's sold more or less than the Xbox version but I know it's sold so many copies surely it can't have sold more than the Xbox version why it's, it's on iPhone like, why, why wouldn't that have sold more? I, I, I can't even comment. I don't know. I, I would never expect it to sell more on the, um, I, on the like, iPhone version than it would on the Xbox version. But I guess you make a point there, because mobile phone gaming is totally breaking out, and everybody's right into that now. Okay, it doesn't say on Wikipedia how many is it sold, but it is on Android. It was actually on Android before uh, iOS. Before the iPhone. 
Oh, uh, right. I, I guess I should have been able to tell you that because uh, it, in the updates on the actual Minecraft launcher on the PC, it tell like you get information about like the iOS and Android updates and stuff. Yeah, because it's it's all a different. It's another company again that is making the the Pocket Edition. It's just it's just so massive, isn't it? And they actually revealed like stats about. Like how many copies it sold, like in this year alone, as in like 2013, and how many copies it sold on Christmas Day and stuff, and it's it's still selling by hundreds of thousands. It's it's like most games, they they get released and that is their peak, and then they slowly go down in a graph. Like yeah. X, um, the Minecraft was the complete opposite. It got released as a beta with like a few thousand people playing it and then they kept adding stuff and word spread and then like people like the Yogcast started making videos and promoted it and it went up and up and up and up and I don't know has it reached the peak yet? I mean it's still selling more copies Is it still going up? Well I mean it, it's still selling more copies like That's... I don't know wh- I don't know whether the quantity of copies per day is going up but I mean I'm sure Xbox and Pocket Edition gave it a big boost and and uh, now we've got the uh, the Ouya going to be coming out at some point this year, and that's going to have Minecraft on it at launch. The what is coming out? You not heard of the Ouya? I have no idea what an Ouya is. <laughs> it's, it's a new console with the most ridiculous name ever. It was um, it was on Kickstarter. It like broke all the records. Do you know what Kickstarter is? <laughs> no, I'm oblivious to everything. Well, Kickstarter is a thing where. Like to launch something or to kickstart something, you could say. Oh, like they I basically see. put it on a website and they ask for donations. And the first really big famous game on there was one by you know Double Fine. Do you know Double Fine? Made yeah. Brutal Legend and uh, you know Tim uh-huh. Schlafer like made a lot of the Monkey Island games and stuff. Um, uh-huh. Yeah, they did a um, Kickstarter to make a point and click adventure game, simply called um, like I think it was called Adventure Game. And uh, they asked for three hundred thousand dollars, and then I think after the first day they were over a million, and they ended up wow. making over three million dollars from it. It was like three million three thousand or something like that, which blew all records. And then they're still making that game now. And since then, there's been a few other big games like that. But then, um, the one that broke all the records is a new games console, uh, which is going to run on the Android system. And it's going to be cheap. I think it's going to be something like about eighty pounds or something like that. Something really? like really, yeah, like under a hundred pounds. And it's got like a controller that looks kind of like an Xbox controller. And it's designed to be completely open. Like you can open it, you can mod it, you can customize it, you can do whatever you want to it. And it's relatively powerful. It'd probably be like just slightly less powerful than like an Xbox three hundred and sixty. So it wow. can run. So it can run things like. Minecraft and stuff and it can run like all these 2D platformers and stuff and every single game on it will be free it's all going to be free to play Like there's, there's probably going to be like in game transactions but you're never going to have to pay to just download the game oh so it's all going to be you're playing and then suddenly it stops like to get the full version or <laughs> it's going to be like a, like a meter to put your electric on you've got to put like a coin <laughs> into the side of it <laughs> oh yeah. that I didn't realise, I did not know that. I've been living under a rock, apparently, just constantly playing and recording Minecraft Let's Plays. I mean, this is old news. I mean, it's coming out this year. Uh, I don't know, I'm going to look it up. Uh, Ooya, here we go, Ooya. Let's look on uh, Wikipedia about Ooya. It it made so much money. Um, Ooya, pronounced Ooya, is an <laughs> upcoming video game console running its own version of the Android operating system. Uh, it raised over $8 million dollars on Kickstarter wow. and That's all that ridiculous. is is people donating and depending on how much you donate you get given something free and so like for the uh, the games like they might like if you donate over $30 you get a copy of the game essentially and so with Ouya people are basically pre-ordering it before it's made while it's still in concept so if you pay over £80 you get yourself the game console essentially so it's people putting trust in it, but if it doesn't get made, if it goes busts, you don't get your money back. So it, oh. it's it's a risk. You're taking a risk in it. But it's well, a cool way of doing it. It's, it's skipping out publishers. That's what Double Fine said. Like, this game hasn't got a publisher. Like, if they went to a publisher and said, we want to make a point-and-click adventure game, they'd go, uh, like, 
does it have guns? Is it a first person shooter? <laughs> like, who are we going to sell this to? But instead, going to the customer saying, do you want a point and click adventure game? And then millions of people going like hell yeah <laughs> i guess it's you can't huge. really go wrong with that if if everybody says like hell yeah then i that sounds like the total best way to go about it does it not yeah like this is what we have in mind do you want it and if i mean eight million was it dollars or pounds not that it really makes a difference because it was, it was eight, eight million for the eight million dollars for the ouya the console uh three million for the double fine game that's unbelievable and i mean to get that sort of response i mean you obviously must be doing something right <laughs> <laughs> yeah well i mean double fine's kind of a bit unique in terms of like they're a bit alternative for a game developer i don't know do you follow their games um did they they made monkey island didn't they uh Maybe well no that, well, that was lucas arts but it was oh. uh uh tim schlafer and i think uh, ron gilbert uh were the people that like the directors of it essentially but they made things like you know stacked up do you remember that game or stacked yeah. or no stacking that's what it's called stacking with like the little like russian dolls and they made yeah. um like costume yeah you did a video on that stuff. didn't you i uh, know i don't think i ever did a video on it i just played on it a lot st- on stacking i didn't do a stacking video did i yeah you d- i'm pretty sure you did a review on it did i i've, I've made a lot of videos <laughs> i'm starting <laughs> to lose track uh, anyway dan um, have you got an interesting topic to talk about? Have Have I got an interesting topic? Um, that you, you can talk on... about by yourself? Because I'm going to run to the toilet and you, you need to keep this going by yourself for like two minutes, all right? Oh, that's what I was going to do. <laughs> Honestly. I didn't okay, know we okay, were okay, here we go. to do that. Okay, we got, we got a test, all right? I'm going to go first because I said it first. You've got to talk about something interesting for like a few minutes, okay? I might take my time just to test you. <laughs> really thoroughly wash my hands, you know, get under my nails. And then you can go for a bit and we'll do the same and then people can vote on who had the most interesting filler time. Okay? Oh, God. I get... <laughs> uh, f- 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 <laughs> um, you, oh, I don't even know. I'm, get, I'm, giving, I'm giving you a few seconds to think. Or I might oh. just wet myself. <laughs> All done. Okay, let's forget that. <laughs> mm. <laughs> okay, right. Yeah, sorry. Uh, it's going to be completely unprofessional, but to be honest, that sort of is fitting with the way this podcast goes. Uh, so yeah, I'll, I'll be back in just like a few minutes, Dan. If you want to want to take the reins, just just well, be nice about me. Don't don't just bitch about me the entire time I'm gone. Oh, okay then. Okay then. <laughs> I've planted a seed, haven't I? <laughs> right, back back in one sec. Well, uh, that, this is an interesting turn of events. I've been. For second episode into his series of um, podcast, and he's already passing it off because he needs to go to the toilet. That's shocking. Well, uh, I guess I'll take this opportunity that I have been given to properly plug um, my channel. And uh, if you if you don't want to hear about or hear my boring monotone voice or hear about my channel, then feel free to turn down for the next couple of minutes while Joe relieves his bladder. But yes, um, it's mainly Minecraft at the minute, but I do do a varying uh, selection of games. Uh, currently, I, I'm uploading Dota. I, I'm mainly going to be uploading the things that I'm really enjoying or the things that um, I'm being asked to upload. But currently... Um, I'm recording Dota gameplay, and uh, that is a MOBA. Um, I don't know if you know if you are familiar with that. It's a a multiplayer online battle arena. Um, basically, it's teams of well, two teams usually of five pitted against each other in a very dynamic um, environment, and there's lots of interesting stuff in there. And, uh, it's just a really fun game. Um, I'm maybe going to do some uh, Smite gameplay as well, because uh, I think that's in closed beta, and um, that's a really good game. So uh, I may be doing some of that too. Um, apart from Minecraft, I've also got some Team Fortress. I do love Team Fortress. Team Fortress holds a, a lot of special place in my heart, and. Uh, it's on Xbox and that's where I first played it and like this was back when people did actually play it. This was years ago when uh, it had a much bigger following than it does now on Xbox and uh, I fell in love with it then 
and now I've just decided that uh, I'm going to be doing some more of that. I did, as uh, st uh, Joe mentioned before, the uh, man versus machine tips, but I'm trying to. I'm just not good at it, really. I'm trying to get some nice gameplays for uh, for some uh, commentaries over. I might do also some uh, let's um, not let's play, but live commentaries over because. Uh, I do tend to get quite uh, worked up when things don't go my way, and uh, I think that may be amusing for um, people to listen to me just raging at my TV, being a little bitch, because uh, people just seem to love that stuff. I people... like the I like the fact that you took the whole opportunity of me being away just to plug your channel. It's just the the full amount of time. <laughs> I couldn't think of anything to talk about. It was actually in the um. The last attempt at, like, take one of the podcasts we spoke about, like the, the man vs. machine thingy, I think. I don't think oh. we, we mentioned that in this one, did we? <laughs> I'm not sure, but that just made this a bit more worse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so he did the... There's, a like, a co-op version in Team Fortress 2, if you haven't played it, where you're the normal multiplayer classes, but you're against, like, AI-controlled robots. And uh, that's sort of what you started off doing it, wasn't it? And he did a video for each different class just sort of giving tips and stuff and I never played Team Fortress 2 on PC and I've never played that game mode uh, but I enjoyed the videos like they seem like good tips even though I've never played it <laughs> yeah um, obviously you've got your nine classes and uh, I don't need to list them off because I'll probably forget some and uh, I'm sure I, I'm not, you... okay here's a test run let's see if we can get all nine let's count them on I think I think the easiest way to split them up is how they do it in the game is like like offensive, defensive, and like support. I I don't even I don't even know what they're split. I don't know what they're like split up as. I I'm pretty sure I'll be able to tell you all nine, but uh, I don't know what they're split up as. Okay, well we got okay defensive. We got so engineer, uh, demo man, and Sniper, heavy. Uh, no, that's that's support and heavy. Oh. I think offensive would be scout, soldier, and pyro. Support yeah. would be sniper, um, spy, and uh, what's the other one? Medic. 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 There we go. We go. All nine. Yay! Yay. We get we gold know stars. Something about games. <laughs> <laughs> You'd hope so. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's true. Uh, yeah. So uh, I did a whole bunch of like the most effective setups that I found, which um, using the items available in game obviously and I found some quite interesting tactics and um, setups to use to really make your class um, work for you and uh, I also have a couple of videos to be uploaded actually of just like quite fun and uh, silly classes setups for um, you to use which even they even though they are meant for um, being silly with like your friends, you can actually still um, be quite effective with them actually if you play them properly. So hopefully, uh, if you like some Team Fortress, you'll check those out and hopefully they'll be helpful for you. Gee, stop selling out, Dan. God. <laughs> <laughs> and you make fun of me about being the prime time radio show <laughs> presenter. <laughs> <laughs> You're a prime time radio show. <laughs> That's a new one. But actually, this kind of moves on nicely to. Are you going to the toilet or are you sticking around? Um, I guess I'll I'll go to the toilet. No, so I'm, I'm not. I'm not trying to force you to. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not trying to hint that you should leave. I just wanted to know. <laughs> well, so that you can go on about how you were a prime time radio presenter and how that anything I've said about you not being one is true is false. Well, I mean, that, that's pretty much what I want to talk about, yeah, like, in, in a nutshell. <laughs> okay, then. Well, I will I will return promptly, and I do apologise for the unprofessional... Um, improfessional? Improfessional, Improfessional yeah, it's, vocabulary. It's a, <laughs> it, it's a word that I made up, and I don't care, and it's being left in. <laughs> okay, why? Right. Well, I, I really probably should have thought of something to speak about while Dan's away. Um... I guess I'll talk about this podcast, seeing as you're listening to it and you've uh, bared with it for over an hour. Um, I still haven't decided what this podcast is going to be. Um, I mean, my first podcast was me just trying to 
talk by myself for a long period of time, which I did all right. I, w I went for 40 minutes speaking by myself, which is something that I've never done before. And uh, I've decided after doing that, I never want to do it again. Uh, so every week I should have a uh, like special guest, um, just someone else that is going to chat with me about like whatever they know. Like say if I'm playing with someone, talking to someone that always plays Minecraft, I'll chat to them about Minecraft. If I'm playing with someone that plays Halo, I'll talk to them about Halo. If it's another YouTuber, I might talk to them about YouTube and stuff. And um, I'm just going to see what, what the podcast becomes. I'm going to see what people like, what people don't like, and just sort of try and adapt. I want to always keep it quite casual. I don't want it to be really produced. I don't want a load of music and sound effects and stuff because um, I, don't, I don't think it needs that. I think that for produced stuff and produced videos, you can watch my normal Minecraft videos. I want this podcast to be different to the type of videos I normally make on my channel because I've already got those videos. They're available. They're on my channel. This wants to be uh, something different and I'm not sure what, like, what I want it to be. And uh, please do suggest. Um, if you want to like ever write in to me and suggest a topic or ask me a question for me to answer in these podcasts uh, you can either tweet me uh, which is just um, at Stampy Longnose uh, you could write on my Facebook which is www.facebook.com uh, forward slash Stampy Longnose uh, or you can actually email me and I've got an email uh, which I'm basically just going to use for questions uh, for this podcast and that is uh, Stampy Longnose at hotmail.co.uk uh, so I don't know I might do a ask stampy section or something uh, if you do have any questions for me um, you can uh, just email them in and I'll answer them in the podcast and that is basically uh, just to replace my messages from subscribers um, if you do remember if you've been watching my videos for a while uh, I used to do videos on my channel where I'd basically uh, go through videos uh, no go through messages sorry that I got sent on Xbox and just sort of reply to them and I think that that series just got a bit stale and the messages I got sent were often I don't know a bit weird and they weren't really questions they were just messages saying like can I add you as a friend and it was a bit boring to be honest uh, so uh, with this way if you want to ask a question I want to get a little shout out in the podcast uh, if you email them to me at the email I just said uh, there should also be a link to it somewhere down below on the podcast uh, then yeah ask me a question or give me a topic or I don't know, just ask my opinion on something and I might use it as a topic on this podcast and uh, give you a little bit of a shout out. And Dan, are you back yet? I am back. You yes. are. I, I thought I heard a little bit of rustling and I assumed that was you <laughs> sort of trying to get into into your seat quietly. I, I was actually back for about, uh, I don't know, probably about half a minute before I said anything because <laughs> I didn't want to interrupt you mid-sentence. <laughs> Hey, you've probably have done everybody who's listening to this a favour. <laughs> <laughs> Just sat down and go, Dan, I'm back. <laughs> Shut <laughs> up now. You're relieved. It's tough, isn't it? Like getting put on the spot like that, just saying, speak for this amount of time. It's it's hard, isn't it? Yeah, it's really hard. It's one of those, like, it's something that I've kind of come across while playing, like while doing Let's Plays and stuff. I never even realised that it, that it was that difficult. To like just so like when you do a let's play, you know I I I sit and set up for something I want to build. Like I I may even like set up like a spawner and spend like twenty minutes just setting up, and then like right hit record and be like, "What's up, guys? Um, so uh, I went to the shops earlier on. <laughs> you just kind of blank, and then you've got to start over. But I mean, with with let's plays and Minecraft videos, you've always got a safety net of the gameplay. Even if you're digging a straight line in a hole or cutting down like 20 trees in a row, you're always doing something in the game and you can, you've always got that to talk about. Even if you go like yeah. chopping down another tree now or going to place another block, you've always got a safety net of you could say anything or talk about what you want to build in the future. When doing a podcast and... I don't know what your situation is, but right now I'm just staring like a microphone in the face, you know, like at eye level, just sort of like, speak into me, boy, like think of something to say. It's, it's it, I don't know, it's kind of daunting, which is why I wanted, I wanted someone else to join me so I can have a conversation with someone else rather than talk to myself with other people listening in. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm actually playing Minecraft right now. <laughs> that's how, that's why I didn't realise that. Um, we'd stopped recording but like the first time we did this because I, I've been like I have a, I've got a 
farm set up and I'm just like um, feeding cows wheat to make them breed because that's what happens apparently that's how I, they that's how farmers work i can't even keep your attention that much while <laughs> mid conversation you have to start playing minecraft <laughs> well i actually just completed skyrim during this podcast <laughs> that's quite good i just got the end credits now yeah, <laughs> anyway, i re- I, re- I realized that this podcast has gone on for a long time but there was uh, one final topic which i wanted to talk uh, about with you specifically which is um, starting a new YouTube channel because I've been doing YouTube for a few years now. I mean, I'm not a complete veteran. I'm still learning like new things every few videos I make. But you've literally just started a YouTube channel, and I've been doing it for a while. And I kind of just wanted to compare opinions, and I don't know, maybe give some tips for people that were deciding whether they want to make a YouTube channel or not. Yeah. Um. Well, my experience, like you know. Uh, I've been around you, and you have been doing a lot of YouTube stuff, and pretty much anything that I know about this has really probably come from you inadvertently teaching me while while you talk about the things that you've got to do yourself, if you know what I mean. Uh, talking about the issues that you've, like, oh, this happened and all that stuff, you know. So, like, anything I know about this, I've pretty much learned from you. Well, do you remember when I first started doing it it was on um on call of duty gameplays and how many attempts i had before like even pressing record like i would do commentaries like i'd have the same gameplay which i had watched a million times and like memorized and i would do the same commentary over and over again saying the same things but trying to say it better or trying to not fluff up my words and i would do it in an Xbox Live party uh, to Dan and like maybe Craig and some of my other friends, Crimsoners off, and then they'd be like, "Oh yeah, you did okay that time, but maybe try introducing it like this or saying it like that." And like, I mean, you put up with me doing the same commentary over and over again and just critiquing it until I was ready to upload my first video, which was rubbish anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I did that when I was doing my, I think the Man vs Machine videos uh, were the first ones I did, the, the Team Fortress ones, and. Uh, that's what I did. I I had ev- I even had everything written down, like because I had to do my research for this. Like the first videos I ever uploaded, I had to sit and actually research, like f- like use this setup. And if it worked, um, go record. I recorded the last waves. They were the games were in waves, and uh, what I, I recorded the last wave if it went well beforehand, and then like when that finished, I had to go and think back, like. What was the setup that I used? How did I upgrade? What like where did I go and all that stuff? So I I'd spent all this time like I knew exactly what I had to say, and then when coming to record it, I just like brain farted everywhere, and you're just like, <laughs> yeah, okay, so I know right. I've got to be here. I've got to tell them about this, and I've got to make sure that this is ca- like um told about like. I've got to make sure people know about this, and then start talking like, "Hey, so this is Fro Dan Fro, what?" And then just like messing it up in stupid ways. It's... I, f- I think my my favorite cock up was <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you don't know, remember the one. I went to say, "Hello, this is Stampy Long Nose, and welcome to a Call of Duty Black Ops gameplay commentary." And instead of saying that. I said, hello, this is Stampy Long Nose, and welcome to a Call of Duty Black Cox gameplay commentary. <laughs> and I burst out laughing. Um, it was a dual commentary with uh, Craig, uh, Crimson as off, you may remember from my videos. Uh, we were doing it together, and I burst out laughing, and he burst out laughing, and then he was like, all right, okay, let's go again. I was like, what? He was like, okay, let's record again. I was like, no, carry on. And he was like, this is it. That You're using that intro. I was like, yeah, it's funny. Carry on. And that's actually <laughs> uploaded. That's on my channel. Like, I uploaded it about two years ago. And the commentary's rubbish. We're waffling on about the balancing and the guns on that game, which no one cares about anymore. But the intro was hilarious. And it's that kind of natural, spontaneous thing, which everyone wants but it's hard to get without forcing it you get it every now and then you've got to make the most of it just yeah. cocking up your words like that literally black cocking up your words <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah it's it's really difficult and daunting as well to like just you know like oh i've got to just talk about something like what can i talk about but um well i i just i just start i kind of put myself on the spot and just start and then just whatever happens happens and if it turns out to be bad then I just don't bother uploading it and do like an- another one on something else. 
Well, That's... we've done we've done it differently because you're very early on started doing let's play videos. For me, for years, I'd I'd never done a let's play. I did uh, reviews where I'd write. Excuse me, gonna burp. <laughs> Sorry, I've drank so much during this let's play. I'd either do a review where I've written a full script and I've got pages, pages and pages of text which I go through and I read. And that's what I do for my reviews, because it makes sense. It's a review. It doesn't have to be spontaneous. It's got to sound professional. It's an edited video. Or a gameplay commentary where I know exactly what I'm going to talk about. I have notes of key points that I want to address. And I go through specifically talking about them. That's all I'd done for years. Until I made this channel and started doing Minecraft, where I was pressing record and going like, Right, what, what, what shall I do? What shall I build today? And I'd never done that. And I kind of had to learn everything I thought I knew again and just sort of try and chill out a bit more <laughs> which I'd never done before yeah uh, I totally get that I mean um, I did I went straight into let's plays because see the, the the way you started off like talking about a subject I don't know what it is but I just can't do that I said I'll be like right I'm gonna talk about um like school and what I like how school was for me and Fun I start topic. talking and I end up starting like going off and just talking about stupid crap and it just turns out terrible and if you listen to it back it's me like yeah um so I had a, a good time in school and uh, I did this well I guess I didn't do that and then I did this well I suppose it was a bit different and it, I, I just can't do that I prefer <laughs> the um let's play thing where you just put the mic on and then open your mouth and whatever sounds come out is what you use. <laughs> Sorry, I, I just had a perfect image of you just sitting down saying open your mouth whatever sounds come out. You're just sitting down and going... <laughs> <laughs> just I'm not a dinosaur. <laughs> 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 Thanks for watching and I'll see you later. <laughs> but did, did you ever have the boundary of it just seeming weird you in the, your, your room by yourself or with someone in the background, which I find even weirder, like just talking to a mic. Did you ever find that strange or just well, difficult? I have two separate um, points about that. And that's um, like, I, I tend to like shout and carry on when I uh, play my games, especially Call of Duty. I definitely shout at and like Halo and custom games and all that stuff. I, I tend to carry on. So... And I mean, I am no uh, stranger to people in my house knocking on the door and coming in like, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> and I mean, like, it's literally my little sister moved out of uh, my house and uh, she's saying like the weirdest thing about being out of the house is not hearing me shit like talking to my TV, like to people on <laughs> to people on the internet. And she's saying like, that's the weirdest thing. So I guess when it's someone not in the room it's fine like i don't really care you know my parents hear me talking stupid voices about like gay butt sex and stuff like just carrying on and it's stuff that i so i was talking about what dan what do you talk about um manly uh man things <laughs> manly man things like gay <laughs> like butt foot, sex. Like, like football and cars and stuff <laughs> burgers <laughs> big fat burgers or, or probably the most embarrassing thing is probably when my parents hear me mock your voice, like "Hello, Joey," and talking <laughs> like that, which is a common occurrence. <laughs> yes. Uh, so, um, like talking on like the Xbox and stuff, or talking to people in general is like fine. I have no problem with Amy being here and just me talking a load of shit. But when it comes to like, okay, I'm gonna actually record this. I it was just like a wall. And it was like, without anybody being there, it was hard. And uh, because uh, I live with my fiance, um she's like in the room. And I can't exactly tell her to get out of the room. So Why? Because that's not pleasant. <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> get out of the room! <laughs> Just like raise my I'm hand. a primetime radio presenter, <laughs> goddammit. <laughs> oh, every time, you've just got to add that in, don't you? <laughs> It's one of my favourite long-running jokes, even though I am the butt of the joke. To be fair, there's not that many long-term jokes we got between us where I'm not the butt of the joke. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. And, uh, with with Amy being in the room, that was just like I just couldn't do it. I just had I was just like, um, this is Dan, and uh, 
yeah, I'm going to do this. And, like, I was like, really, really shy and paranoid. But I'm kind of, the way I'm thinking about it now is that, like, you know, the whole point is that people hear it. And, I mean, uh, I can't be like, oh, if if I don't want to listen to it, how can I expect anybody else to listen to it? And <laughs> well, to be fair, every single Let's Play you do, you say, like, um, if you've listened to here, then well done. Like what? Or like you say, like welcome to the video. Are you still watching? Why are you still watching? You always start so negative like that. Like almost every time, you're sort of. You, I don't. You always sound surprised that people do want to watch your videos. But, <laughs> That's because I they am do. surprised. <laughs> <laughs> but I am very appreciative of those people that do watch them. And uh, oh, that's just because I'm not kidding myself. I mean. Uh, there's no point telling yourself that you're brilliant if you're not, because then, you know, people aren't going to respond to that. You know, if you, I, I, I'd rather be honest with myself. Like, I'm not very good at this, so that I improve on it. Where yeah, if I just think that I'm amazing, like, oh, this is the best commentaries ever, then you know, I'm not going to want to change and improve and uh, get better at it. Well, what what I think my big difficulty is, and like to this day with commentary, is doing it in my normal voice. Like whenever yeah. I do commentary, I always speak louder than I normally do, and I, 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 I still find it different, like difficult to speak natural into a mic. And when I started doing Let's Plays, I did uh, some Deus Ex Let's Plays, which like each video got like all of six views. <laughs> and <laughs> when doing them, I was fine. I was so just because I knew no one was watching it. I was just I was just chatting. I was just basically playing the game and just talking about what was happening as if like someone was sitting next to me. So I wasn't talking throughout the entire like game there was gaps where i wouldn't say anything if there's nothing to talk about and it was really casual and the few people that did watch it said they liked that style and then when i, I started watched it yeah and then dan watched it and like people said they liked that and when i started minecraft i didn't think anyone was going to be watching i it was the same channel as my second channel when i started doing minecraft i think i had like 12 subscribers when i started doing minecraft videos and i did it and i was like yeah I'm, I'm, i thought i'd play minecraft for a bit um okay i'm guess i'm breaking a dirt block why not and I was chatting like that and I was so just just me but people liked that and because Minecraft was popular my channel suddenly grew to a thousand subscribers in like about five months or something which was completely out of the blue to me and now I know that any Minecraft video I upload is going to get at least a thousand views I've kind of gone back now to what I used to be like where I'm less myself because I don't know, just because I know people are going to be listening to it, it's yeah. hard to be relaxed and natural. Like, I kind of feel like I need to entertain them. But <laughs> me thinking that makes me not real and people don't like it. And I don't like that. I want to be relaxed. But I don't know. I listen to other people like the Yogcast and stuff. And they sound so natural, but still just hilarious. And I'm so jealous of them. Like, I need to get the balance of me still being me and being genuine but still trying to make people laugh and have stupid stuff happen. And it is tough. It's, I don't know. I don't know if it's something that you should really work at or something that should just come in time. I don't know. Hopefully it will. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I'm just working. Like, I mean, I try and critique myself and try and improve, which uh, I'm sure you do as well. You obviously do if you're thinking about things to improve on. <laughs> but, uh, I, you know... If if I can identify a problem, then everybody else must be able to do that. You know, if if I, you know, you kind of you're slightly biased towards yourself. Like you know, oh that wasn't so bad when it was a bit worse than like you let on to yourself. So I mean, like if I know if there's someone there's something bad that I need to work on, then uh, I try and actually work on that, and I really hope you can't hear the dogs barking in the background. <laughs> a little bit. I did a little bit. I don't know I, if it'll I, pick up on the podcast, but I heard that. I do apologise for that. There's, no, there's nothing I can do about that. I can't exactly <laughs> do anything. But, um, you know, I what I'm trying to do now is just be natural. That's my goal for just now, is just totally be natural. And if it's not entertaining then there's no point in me carrying on because there's no point making a big um like ma inventing a character just so just to get people to like my videos you know there's no point well i don't see if it's not going to be entertaining i have to like 
really work on being this person that I'm actually not and it's a chore to be that, then, you know, I'd rather just not do the videos than do that. I mean, that's the problem. Once you've created a character, you got you got to stick with it. You can't suddenly yeah. change back to being yourself. If you're always yourself, no matter what game you're playing, then and people warm to you, like you're gold, you know. But if you do create a character of like, hey, 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 how you doing? You know, you got to keep that up. You got to keep up that enthusiasm. And I don't know. I'm getting scared that I'm, I might start doing that. Like just because it's now starting to get more popular, I I want to make sure I, I I stay just being me. Which it, it's hard. It's hard when you when you know people are gonna watch it. Like it, it it's more difficult than when I was making Minecraft videos because it was fun to make Minecraft videos <laughs> because I like the game and I I can't shut up about it. So I might as well stick a mic in front of me because <laughs> which yeah. is what it used to be like. Well, I think actually doing this um podcast has been a lot easier than what i thought it was going to be just purely because we're not talking to ourselves we're talking to each other which i didn't realize was going to have such a big effect on how awkward it felt talking in front of like a microphone well there's someone to fill the awkward pauses i was actually talking to uh, dan before we did this pod uh, this podcast uh, this, this podcast pod- <laughs> <laughs> when we're doing the podcast um, yeah <laughs> <laughs> before we did this podcast I was talking about uh, when I was doing the one, the first one I did the one before this one, I hated it because I was doing my stupid voice where I was speaking louder and I had to keep taking drinks because otherwise my throat would burn and set itself on fire due to friction or something so I'd have to have a drink while doing it but while I'm drinking there's just nothing, I'm like, gotta have a drink and then all you'd hear is and then mm. and there's no other sound like I said I need someone else to speak while I'm drinking <laughs> that's the big problem with the fo- so I need drinking filler <laughs> it all boils down to your alcoholism and needing <laughs> everything someone does. to everything in life just boils down everything's affected by my alcoholism <laughs> <laughs> I think actually uh, I probably should just in case because like most people listening to this don't actually know me. I'm not. I'm not an alcoholic. <laughs> I actually very rarely drink. Um, but yeah, th- this is one of the occasions when, after the stress of the first podcast not working, I had to. <laughs> yeah, I still can't believe you did that. That's quite shocking. I don't know. Well, how's this podcast gone? Let's okay. Seen as I think we got to wrap up soon be- before this podcast lasts like 24 hours, <laughs> and now <laughs> before we get to the point when no one would put up with this length of time with us speaking Let, let's review our own podcast and we can learn for it uh, if we do another one together if I decide to bring you back <laughs> which I'm that sure I would be an honour yeah so I mean actually wait well, one last thing I want to talk about I did actually want to talk about it earlier do you find that when you record yourself and you feel like you've done it rubbish you feel like you've fluffed up your words like a good example is the let's play you made about when you went to the never which, um, if some of you have seen, you'll know what I'm talking about. If you haven't, you should definitely check it out because it's one of the most hilarious Let's Plays I've ever seen from anyone on Minecraft. It's basically Dan going to the Nether to get... Uh, you're trying to get glowstone, aren't you? Yeah, and... trying to make uh, glowstone lamps, redstone yeah. lamps. And it, it all goes wrong. Basically, he gets to... Sh- <laughs> the second he goes through, it's just like, boom, 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 just guards firing at him. And then his frame rate, like, goes to rubbish. And, like, he's playing, like, a flip book, essentially, and it freezes and he dies and he has to try and get back through to save his stuff. And it all goes wrong. And, like, it, at one point even goes to, like, a please stand by, like, do 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 which just made me actually laugh out loud. And in your eyes, as you said, you knew it either going to be a complete failure and your worst video or your best because of just the entertainment value. But do you find that when you record something and in your mind you're like, oh my God, that's rubbish. Can I even use that? When you listen to it back, you think, actually, like, what was I on about? That that's actually not awful. You just over-exaggerate how bad your mistakes are. Yeah, well, I know when I first started, like, as soon as, like, you know, I did that wee silly intro and it's like, boom, headshot. Like, that's yeah. what I use in my intro. And every time I used to listen to my videos, as soon as that came out, like, boom, I was always, like, instant, um, like, oh, what's that word? Like, um, 
What's that thing you do? Like, oh, for God's sake. What were you anyway, trying to say? I'll help you out. Were you cringe? Worthy? It's like every time I hear it, it's like cringe, and I just feel like, oh, no. And then, like, I'd be like, hey, what's up, guys? And I just. <laughs> And then, and then the whole time, like uh, Amy, used, Amy watches them, and she like put them on in the background while I'm playing. And as soon as I hear, or at least I used to, as soon as I hear it, like boom, I just like cringe, and I'd be like, <laughs> "Oh my god, you've got to switch that off. I can't listen to it because I was just so embarrassed that it's like, well, you know, it's actually not that bad. I mean, considering like." people are watching it and so it's obviously not that bad and if I'm being myself throughout the whole thing and I haven't changed anything then you know people are going to watch it again and that's what I said to just get over that like you know um, if it's working already then it doesn't really matter. I just find that any pause in a video when I do it it feels like it was like I I won't think of anything to say for like three seconds, and I'll be like, oh, no, I'm just going to place this block here, <laughs> and then then there'll be a little gap, and I'll be like, oh, what's I feel? What's I say? Oh, but by, by the way, in my next video, I want to then I have to like that little gap of not being able to think of something to say, or when I fluff up a word, I go to say cobblestone and I say gobblestone, and in my <laughs> head I'm like, oh, that was such a stupid thing to say, and it seems like such a major annoying thing, but then when I watch it back, I'm like. I, I, I hardly even noticed that. That wasn't even really a pause. It felt natural in the video, but at the time, everything just seemed so much worse. It's an, a, a, like, an amazing tragedy, but when I watch it back, it's just, it's normal. It's, no one's a robot, it's human. Yeah, <laughs> it's a human you, mistake. Yeah, you you always end up really overcritical of your, like, own performance, and that's what, um, that's what kind of makes it difficult. You know, most of the time, like, you know, not every, like, nobody talks, like, 100% of the time and like seamless conversation all the time there are pauses in human speech and it's not bad to do that but it's that getting when at the time it just feels like it's half an hour that you've stopped for and not just like the three milliseconds that it actually takes you to um think of the next word just like that <laughs> usually so wait, 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 wait. Well, what you're trying to say is that sometimes it's good to pause <laughs> Very clever, very clever. Yes, pausing is sometimes good. But sometimes... <laughs> it's too long! <laughs> <laughs> yes, sometimes it is speak, too long. Speak, sorry, speaking of too long. <laughs> I'm not talking yes. about my nose here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyway, well, I want to thank you very much for joining me on this podcast. Um, even though it didn't work the first time, and at the time I was a little bit annoyed. Not at you, just I was annoyed because that podcast, the first attempt, which I really liked, wouldn't get shared to the world. But we've done it again, and we've done it for literally three times as long. <laughs> and um, yeah, so thank you very much for joining me, Afro Down, on this podcast. Um, you'll be listening to... Uh, Stampy's lovely podcast. I know this probably sounds like a little bit of an abrupt ending, um, but I think that if I didn't suddenly say stop, uh, this might have gone on uh, for a really long time. So, is there any final things you want to say before we completely wrap this up? Uh, pretty much all I would just like to say is thanks very much for uh, having me, and uh, I hope to. I'm looking forward to seeing this come out and cringe at my h horrific performance here <laughs> we've just spoke about it it won't be that bad <laughs> <laughs> anyway so yeah i've been joined here by afro dan who um as we spoke about for a considerable amount of the podcast is another youtuber if you do want to check out some of his videos if you just search in youtube afro dan he's about the third one down you'll just see a, a youtube channel called afro dan is it afro dan 91 is that what the actual youtube's called yeah, uh, Aphrodite ninety one. Yeah, yeah, and then his like his pictures of uh, Team Fortress. You can find it really easily. There's not many videos entitled Afro Dan. There's a few. There's a weird drummer video called Afro Dan, but uh, <laughs> he should be pretty easy to find. Um, if you don't know who I am, if you just sort of stumbled across this on iTunes, um, I'm another YouTuber. Uh, if you search into YouTube, either Stampy Long Nose or Stampy Long Head, uh, you should uh, find my videos if you want to check them out. Um, but yeah, this is a good time to end the video. Uh, thanks very much for sticking with us for this large like amount of time, and hopefully you'll join me in my next podcast. That's the end, though, and I'll see you all later. Bye. Bye.